start from the place where we left last time and we will solve to get a closed form solution. So the PL, the call loss probability is, I think that's where I left. Probability of being in a state sigma, arrival rate, probability of call loss conditioned on sigma, summation over all sigmas actually. So that's where we started. We have identified individual components. I think for P of sigma that's what we were doing and we could get to a solution which was Uh, I think I have not uh, proven that it was M C <coughs> that was probability of being in state X and correspondingly probability of being in state Y was That's what we had done. Okay. Uh, this I had got from Angset distribution. So very quickly, just recalling that what we did was being in state X was We are taking case where m is smaller than n actually. Okay. So this can only go till n. You can only have n. Uh, you can only have m occupancy, not n. So that was the probability of being in state x. And correspondingly, it is true for state y also. make it i actually that's better so it will not confuse okay and what i did i think if you recall quickly i think i did uh, very fast because it was in the end of the class now this is a complete binomial so i can always write this thing as 1 plus lambda by mu raised power m okay this is coming from complete binomial and then I moved it, uh, we just modified this thing. It is mu plus lambda raised power m, mu raised power m, okay. And what I did is, I said, okay, let's put lambda plus mu as A. The reason for doing this was, if I divide by actually, if I take mu out, this will be n lambda. So it, this will be 1 over lambda plus 1 over mu. This value will be equal to this. So on time scale, if this is the first call arrives, the call remains there, call actually goes away, call is cleared, the next call arrives. So this duration is approximately 1 over mu and this duration is approximately 1 over lambda. So this technically gives nothing but the fractional utilization and we also define this as a load in Erlang's. Okay, Erlang is the name of a gentleman and then since he had contribution to Switching so to respect him is given as Erlang. So now how much Erlang of loads? So for one telephone line, the fractional utilization cannot be more than one. If you have 1000 input ports and if you have 0.9 fractional utilization per line, so it will be 900 Erlang's load on the whole switch. Okay, that's the way it will be defined. So 
we solve it further actually? Hmm? No, because call cannot arrive. See, when the line is busy, the call is on hold, no call can arrive during this period. And it is not between two, because it is a, a special kind of process. You take any particular time you spend, it need not be that call should have been arrived that time. And after how much time the call will arrive? It will, the average time will always be 1 by lambda. <laughs> that is the beauty of this particular distribution. Because call cannot arrive here, call will only arrive after this. So, there, uh, this can should not be included in the arrival rate. Because at that time line is busy, occupied, call is already there. So, 1 by lambda corresponds to this entity. If you converse, put all 1 by mu is equal to 0, then it will be exactly whatever is the Poisson process which we have learned. So, that is why it is done this way. Because telephony it is peculiarly in this fashion, because it is a circuit switch scenario. So, now solving, I, I need to just convert everything to A and this will give me this thing actually. I think this is a step where I missed out. So, I require and of course, 1 minus of A is 1 minus of lambda plus lambda plus mu. Okay, so, I will just do that conversion. So, from here you know what has to be done. Hmm? So, mu m minus x. So, I have to take out mu plus lambda m minus x. So, here mu minus mu plus lambda x will be left because this sum has to be equal to this mu m minus x I have already taken lambda raised power x will be here. So, take this and take this and you will end up in getting this. Okay. So, p x and p y both are known to me. Uh, I have already determined what is going to be lambda x y. This also we had determined. We also had determined yeah, this is a middle stage switch. Okay. So, k is the number of switches in the middle stage. Okay. With that we had also found this. So, th all things are there, I have to now put it in that summation and then solve for it actually. So, I will do this. So, remember it is a dual summation. Sorry, this has to be. That's yeah, you are right because R will be equal to N. I am using a different notation that's but anyway now I will not use this so that there is no confusion. I do it correctly. Okay. So it will be N minus X. n minus y hmm? 
summation over x y x y is the uh, delta or gamma uh, ok what it is used uh, sorry I think there I have used gamma last time just check in the previous thing. I have used delta so I will keep on this is anyway we will cancel I am not bothered about it this anyway we will cancel well, that is why I have taken a constant for which I do not know the value so I have put in your uh, lambda sigma has been put now let us put p of sigma which is multiplication of these two x and y both are independent So, I have done this p x p y now conditional probability x factorial y factorial divided by x plus y minus n n factorial. So, numerator part has been done ok. Uh, what I will do is I will try to solve in this equation and I will go slow so that because you have to rewrite the equation I can erase the board and do it and this will be I think this cannot be n, this has to be k because the reason for this is this I think the way I have taken because k is greater than n that is why this gets converted to n c y only n maximum connections can take place at any point of time. Okay. Input line is m and this is n. So, in that case I have to use m here actually in that case. I look at the expression this should be m. So, I think to be consistent I will just change wherever n is there I will just put this should be again m. I can observe the inconsistency otherwise. Uh, this is then n it will be fine. So, this is actually n and this we are using n because I have my derivations with n k actually. Uh, anywhere is there anything else wrong? No. So, this I have to change. This is fine. So, kindly verify that everything is correct ok. So, it is as per this notation now. Lambda sigma over the terms of n, there should be n plus sigma over n. Lambda sigma, no this cannot be n. Incoming line how many are free? Because n is less than n. n is small n is greater than m. So, number of lambda calls will be n only. m, m. number of maximum calls can be n even if n is larger you cannot have more than m calls only m, m of these a links can be occupied no? well, that is what I derived I think you, there is same confusion n k thing <laughs> in my lecture notes I think it is written as n k on the website. So, that is where the mistake is, but anyway forget that website I have to be consistent with whatever I have doing in the class and you should be capable of modifying all these symbols <laughs> whenever required ok. Because I also remember it is n k, but then since I have been doing m n, so I will be doing m n not an issue. So, I have to actually now I cannot take m minus x and m minus y out of this x y summation you have to understand this, I, but I can take 
delta very clearly without any issue. This delta can be taken out. This delta will be cancelled. Fine. Expand these MCX and MCY. Do the same thing here. There's nothing but a step by step evolution now. Okay. So I can. Cancel this and I will become minus 1. This will become minus 1. I can write the same factorial as similarly, this factorial can be written as. I can take this m square out I can do the same thing on the numerator side. So, I will end up in m minus 1 m minus 1 minus 1 this fine n factorial is independent of x and y. So, this can be taken out. Okay. So, m square cancels. So, I can remove this. Uh, now, this particular thing can be written as if you look at this expression, this is nothing but m minus 1 c x m minus 1 minus x. So, there is one extra 1 minus a which will be there. Okay. Similarly, for this I can also write 1 minus a m minus 1 c of y So, I can very well replace this whole thing and 1 minus a square can be taken out. x and y both are independent here. Okay. And there was earlier one extra term that will actually become 0 obviously, which you can verify. So, one term has been now reduced these two are independent. So, it is nothing but complete binomial and I can replace I can actually simply write this thing as summation over x and this as summation over y that is possible this thing is nothing but 1 raise power m minus 1 which is equal to 1. So, this whole denominator is gone. Perfect, you have only 1 minus a square. Okay. Now, let us look at the uh, top stuff what we can do.
I have to use some trick here now. M minus 1 factorial square actually can be taken out. So, this is no more required. And now I will split into two summations, one is x, other one is over y. Okay, I will do it over x later. First over y and second one over x. So, anything which is having y, I will keep it on this side. This x factorial cancels with this, this y factorial cancels with this. This is what you have. So, I am just going to rewrite it actually. Let me rewrite first. So, that is what you are going to have. I can now multiply and divide. Uh, just a minute, I will do something. Hmm? Huh, I have to do that. No? I am just splitting that, sorry. Okay. So, this one I will keep here. summation, these two terms actually will come here after this summation. So, this is what is the summation for y. Okay, that is summation for x and I will then multiply and divide by something. So, what is sum of these two? That has to be independent of y, that is the only condition. It should not be function of y. So, one is having plus y, other one is having minus y, so it will actually cancel if I add. So, I can multiply the by that fact, uh, whatever is the sum, factorial of that I can put that in numerator as well as in denominator. That is simplest way of doing it. So, it will be m, just add these two plus x minus n minus 1. You can put in your numerator, same thing I have to put and this I can take out because it is independent of y. Yeah. So, this one is now, this 1 minus a square, I need not even keep this line. 1 minus a square, I can just put it in here. And this thing, this summation over y. Now, what are the valid values of y that you have to figure out? So, valid values of y will be, they will be ranging from So, first thing is this actually should become 0 and secondly this should become 0. That is how you will actually get the range. Okay. So, y will be actually varying one extreme it will be uh, x plus y sorry x minus n. <coughs> uh, n minus y do you make it 0? n minus x. Now, this is the condition when x plus y is equal to n just when the blocking starts. If x plus y is less than n, blocking cannot happen. Okay. This is just when the blocking starts. This is the first case. So, the y will actually range from this value for rest everything. This will go to 0 anyway. 
you cannot have summation over those terms. Other terms has to be removed. Even if all other possible values of y is there, there is zero. I am only going to sum up only this range when blocking happens. Only those terms are there. So I am not estimating when blocking is not possible. Those cases I am not considering in my term. So that is why when that condition x plus y is uh, actually great, uh, smaller than n happens, those cases are not coming in. If that situation is satisfied for your switch, this will give you a value 0 actually. So we have taken care of. Earlier case in least approximately, we were not isolating those conditions. We are not removing them. Here in the summation term itself, when the blocking is happening, I am removing those. Because those becomes invalid values, otherwise I cannot sum it up. If I take y is equal to going from 0 to n, it is not possible because terms will be invalid in that case. I cannot build up a closed form solution. So while building up closed form solution, I am actually removing or excluding those terms. Okay. Uh, this is actually usually is not evident, so I am explicitly stating this. So and the next range will be coming from here. y will be m minus 1, obvious, because there is one line which is free for which you are trying to, on which the call is coming. You are not looking at blocked state, you are looking at arrive, uh, when a call comes whether it will get through or not get through. So in worst case it will have m minus 1 states. Okay, you cannot have higher than this, it is not possible. Hmm? So this is the range over which this summation will be done. Then only I will get a closed form solution, otherwise I cannot get a closed form solution. So because the moment I take this summation, because this is nothing but a binomial now, I can now convert it into a binomial. I can, I have to put something, this a raised power y is there, I, x I can take inside now. I can call it a x plus y, there is minus n here. Okay. So, I can put, just a minute, this is minus 1, so I have only 1 left here. I will also even remove this and this will be converting it to minus 1. I will put, I require minus n here, I will put a raised power n here. <coughs> Okay. So, still everything is in balance. Now, this is value matches to this and m minus of this or basically this value comes here. This is now complete binomial. This is the range which is also the valid range when the blocking happens. I am removing all other terms so I can do the summation and I will end up in getting. So, range concept is very important because usually unless you under appreciate this you will not be able to figure out that why you are getting the correct probability of call blocking. Correct you are getting because I am, ex I am not taking this summation other terms which corresponds to the cases where blocking does not happen, those have been removed. Okay. So this now you can solve. So y variable is not there on this side. So what will be the value? a plus 1 minus a raised power m plus x minus n minus 1, that should be the value, p plus q raised power n in binomial. This is nothing but 1 raised power something, this whole thing is unity. Once it is unity, I can simply remove this. Excellent, we have got this one step closer to further solution. Now, if I add m minus x minus 1, this m plus x minus n minus 1, right. If I add these two, again I will get a range of x by keeping this as 0 and then this as 0. Okay. So, sum of these two is how much? 2 of m, x will cancel, minus 2, minus n. 
So, I have to just take the factorial of this and multiply and divide. Done? Uh, this any anyway can go out, so I am not bothered. I am only bothered about now this particular piece. Again, you have to look at the range. So, what terms you are excluding? What all values of possible values of x you are excluding is important here. So, now one possible range will be m minus x minus 1 is equal to 0 you put. So, x will be m minus 1 which is valid because that is the maximum which you can get. But what is the minimum value of x? So, x will be n minus 1, n plus 1, yeah, minus m. There is a minimum value of x which is there. I remember in earlier case it was based on y was ranging, y ra y's range was depending on x actually. When you are computing range for y, it was depending on x. So, whatever, but x has to be minimum chosen as, we, any one of them can be least actually depending on what is the value of n. If n plus 1 is on this side, remember this, these many number of ports and these ports. Physical these number of ports are double the, uh, this n plus 1 is greater than or equal to double the value of m, then x will be, this value will be, uh, this be, usually it will be lower actually. This will only be higher if it is more than double the value of m. Only m minus 1 calls are there. Na? Worst case scenario. Yes, so m minus m minus 1 is equal to m plus 1. <laughs> you are right, this will be. Because if you actually go out of this range, again the blocking will not be possible, blocking will not happen. Now, why this is happening? If n minus m minus 1 is this, if my x is less than that, on the other side m minus 1 can be occupied and I am having value less than this, there is always possibility whatever combination you take, it will be always non-blocking. Only if this difference is fully covered, remember I have done a case. In this case, can blocking happen? Blocking cannot happen. Blocking has to happen only if whatever is the leftover is covered by this minimum. Minimum value has to be this, and that is what I am writing n minus m minus 1, n minus m minus 1 is total subtracted. That is this value. So, this value minimum has to be equal to this, and maximum it can go to m minus 1 anyway. So, this value has to be lower because x cannot be higher than m minus 1. So, this is a lower range, lower value and this is higher. Okay. And the case which I am taking when n minus m minus 1 becomes equal to m minus 1, that is a strictly non-blocking switch in that case. Probability of call loss will be 0. Okay. That will immediately, so with the summation all terms will go out actually in that case, you will not be including any term in that case. So, again it means I am only taking the values in this range, then it will be a complete binomial, otherwise it will not be. So, I can now solve it. So, I have m minus 1 factorial a square n factorial 2 m minus n minus 2 
and this is nothing but a plus 1 minus a whole raised power 2m minus 2 minus n complete binomial a cancels with this it is 1 so your no I have made a mistake what mistake I have made I have done something but it is incorrect you have to have these terms which corresponds to these I do not have term for A which corresponds to this here. So, I cannot simply write A plus 1 minus A and then say equal to this. No, that is incorrect. This A raise power N actually should come out. This is independent of X. This is not varying. So, I have to take it out. Okay. I have to put some other term here. So, I will put 1 M minus X minus N minus 1 that is a way of doing it actually. Hmm? So, once I do it, it is 1 plus 1 minus a uh, this is a raise power n, yeah, a raise power n because we had minus n was three used here no, earlier in the previous step. In the summation where we do, did summation over y, we have moved it inside a raise power minus n was required, so we created a raise power n here. a raise power x actually was moved inside there. So, that you can have a raise power x plus y minus n. Okay. So, this is what is your the closed form expression for probability of call loss. So, I will write it as m minus 1 factorial a raise power n 2 minus a 2 m minus 1 minus n n factorial 2 m minus 1 minus n and remember this is nothing but call blocking probability and we have estimated that call blocking probability will be a function of n minus 1 if n minus 1 is replaced by n, this will end up in this is a switch being in block, this is a time congestion, this is a call congestion, this we had already computed earlier for a composite switch. So, there is an alternative proof because this is a call blocking probability. You can also do when the switch will be in the blocking state, that estimation that is known as Jacobius approach for call congestion estimation in the same three stage network. And he will actually get the result where P of this is P of L, P of B will be this is M Jacobi has got this expression and can you observe these two and these two? The same relationship still holds, same relationship still holds. So, this there is an alternative approach through Jacobius. Name of the gentleman who did this alternative der derivation. So, that gives you the call blocking probability. Okay. So, now next we have to go into the all kind of theorems, so that we can formally figure out that why a switch is strictly non blocking or why a switch is rearrangeably non blocking and why a switch is wide sense non blocking. And can we reduce their cross point complexity further? I want to minimize on cross point complexity as far as possible. So, far what we have figured out is O and 3 by 2 for a strictly non blocking switch. Can I make still better than that? Okay. 
yes we can do still better than that we can get o n log 2 n log 2 n's power 2.58 but how this 2.58 comes is interesting this can be derived it's not a heuristic number we will do that derivation eh? but before that when i go through now formal proofs and formal theorems regarding this you have to understand the concept of false matrix so again it's a name of gentleman in switching theory and this is a very very handy tool in giving all kind of formal proofs theorems lemmas everything comes from here okay so i have sufficient time to actually to explain what is this false matrix what's the meaning of this 2 by 2 it's simple to do but if multi stage um, number of ports can be arbitrary any kind of thing and then you have to do a formal proof you require this so you will have three stage switches and i have lot of middle stage ones important thing is that if i take any other input and output pair switch the path between these switches is not blocked by the paths which are connected between these two switches okay that's extremely important i can set a path between this and this independently of this and this if a path between this and this is being set up that may lead to blocking of a path being set up between these two so at least either input or output switch has to be common for the blocking to happen or for the interference interference in setting up of the switch so in fact i need not look into this that's very generic i think you should be able to appreciate that and i will give now some values say a and b this can be numbers numbers are also nothing but symbols to represent they are formed from a set but we have built up our own arithmetic on that or an algebra by which we can define the complete number system so it does not matter for me it can be any arbitrary symbols that's good enough okay because the algebra here is pretty simple i can write this as the middle stage is f g h i j whatever you want to put and what we will do is we can always create a matrix that's why it's known as pauls matrix okay and if for example this between a and b if i want to set up a connection so all the rows corresponds to the input stage switches okay so these are input stage switches and what should be these columns output is obviously <laughs> see remember the science is very symmetric in nature so if you understand symmetry and beauty of it it is going to be very very simple anything which is ugly probably it's incorrect that's a thumb rule and you will have here output stage switches so i will just explain something and then leave it for you and we will go ahead with this particular thing later on if a switch a is here switch b is here so number of switches number of columns number of switches number of columns a and b i can set up path through many of them so if i have set up a path through f there is already a path happening so i will put a entry f in this cell which is common but this cell need not have one entry it can have multiple entries also if i am using g h i j also to set up path between these two i will put those entries also f g h i j but f and g has already been used for a and b but a i am using to connect to some i to some other say um, some z so for the z column in that cell i will put this i okay so that is what is known as pauls matrix only thing now you have to understand is okay i am actually giving it as an uh, assignment you try to think about it you can even look into the notes that's your choice but i will appreciate if you try to think on your own and come with the conditions 
and let one verify with the notes or anyway I will tell that. Okay. What are the conditions of validity of this particular pulse matrix? If I give you a pulse matrix, can you check whether it is a valid pulse matrix or not? My conditions like uh, how many times entry can come in a column, can it repeat? Will I have only, F can come only once in the row or F can come only once in the column. Okay. Can F come at two or three places? How many entries can be there at most? So try to think about all those conditions. You have actually understood quite a bit already. Only thing you have to just convert it into now this. And amazingly you need not visualize the switch after this. You can just work with this pulse matrix blindly after that. Okay.